so I decided to quickly just talk about all the different types of watercolor brands that you get obviously there are numerous brands out there and I want to share the the type of watercolor paper that I um, I prefer obviously but there are like I say many different brands and many different types that you can use um, that you might prefer so this is just my opinion it is what I like it's what I prefer I bought these little samples from my art store recently and I've actually made a video of this on YouTube to share just a different it was a quick little video it was actually for my online school and just to share the difference between the types of paper that you can get now you will see when an artist paint in watercolor they will always say they painted it either on hot press on cold press or on rough watercolor papers this video can actually show you exactly the difference between the three papers this is all 300 grams all arches watercolor paper and this is the one that I normally paint on this is the smooth hot press watercolor paper and as you can see the grain is very very smooth so it's very lovely to paint botanical flowers on there lots of detail um, you can get away with you know scrubbing on this paper and uh, lots of scrubbing obviously paper is delicate so don't go overboard don't scrub with a hard brush and this is the cold press watercolor paper and now we're going on to the rough. This is obviously not smooth like this one. And also this, these two, you can just see the difference in paper. So this is the rough arches watercolor paper. I hope this video will show you the difference between the three types of watercolor paper. Um, and then this one is a board. It's quite a big board. I just want to see. It is art board. This is Fabriano uh, that I recently bought. It's obviously still in the plastic, but I would say it is very similar to the cold press watercolor paper. It's definitely not smooth. Um, I painted the daisy on uh, that this art board paper. It was lovely to paint on. Um, it obviously, there's a slight difference in color. Not much, but there's a slight, slight difference in color. Obviously, there's a the plastic on. I can, let me just take the plastic off to show you what I mean by that. Okay, I'm back. So this is the massive art board paper that I bought recently. And I painted that little daisy on there. So I just want to show you how thick it is. Uh, let me just lift it up so it's quite thick and you don't have to stretch this paper at all a lovely little piece of paper so there's no work you don't have to stretch it at all um, like I said it's amazing paper to paint on you can also get away with quite a lot of detail on this one this type of paper it's not like the rough paper now, I'm not saying you won't get away with a lot of detail on this one I'm just saying it might be slightly difficult to get your little lines tiny little detailed lines on there but like i said i haven't tried it before so i can't comment that much on it so these are the different types of paper and then like i said yesterday let me just show you now again this is the cold press homemade newly watercolor paper and very similar to the arches cold press watercolor paper if you can see the difference I think this is quite clear um, so this is a hominule this is a block of watercolor paper hanemule it's also 300 grams it's 29 Point seven to, uh, by 42 centimeters quite big so I normally cut it in half um, and it is a block 
like any other video there the, like i said before it is a block and you have to use a little knife palette knife just to obviously lift that piece up there and then you just slide it on all sides and lift it off but this is also the cold press and then that is the cold press of the Han Nemule watercolor paper so just to show you the difference not much although um, I would say the arch is slightly smoother and then this is the Fabriano artboard cold press watercolor paper and then just to show you the difference again with the rough watercolor paper compared to the cold press watercolor paper and this is the row of the arches hot press watercolor paper that i cut in um in specific sizes for me um and like i said it's quite difficult to cut it straight because it's on a row and like you can see i've already stretched it slightly because i keep it in a wooden press when i cut it i still have to stretch it though so it doesn't buckle when i paint on it you can handle quite a lot of um scrubbing a lot of water but you have to stretch this paper and then this is obviously like i said a piece of the honey new watercolor paper that i cut in half to use for some of the online tutorials i hope this is helpful and it shows you the difference between hot press cold press and rough watercolor papers um, I want to just talk quickly about watercolor paper, um, especially if you are one of my students and you will notice that I always talk about using a very good brand of watercolor paper. And the reason I say that is because I just want to get this one brand of paper, um, which I've ordered when I started painting in watercolor. I still have this little booklet. I'm not going to share the name of this paper, but I will show you what I mean when I share the paper. Um, so when I talk about watercolor paper, the reason why I say please invest in a good quality watercolor paper is because it will affect your painting and the way you will feel about watercolor. It will either ruin your experience or it will make your experience worthwhile and you would love to paint in watercolor so the first brand that i've ever tried in watercolor which i nearly 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 gave up on was this brand and i want to just get a piece of this bottom piece of paper just to show you now on the camera it looks quite white but it's not there's a blue tinge to the paper and when you paint on it, it changes the colors of the, the pigments of your watercolor paint. And look, it's maybe a, a nice paper to practice certain things on, but it's not a painting a paper, not paper that you want to use forever. I can highly recommend these papers, um, either Arches or Fabriano or this blocking foot or this um, honey mule watercolor papers there are other brands too that i will will talk about in the future but i first want to test it out again before i recommend it to anyone this is obviously cold press watercolor paper and i normally use hot press watercolor paper if you're really serious about watercolor paper i can highly recommend the these brands this is honey Mule. this is the bocking fit watercolor paper and what i like about this is if you do little studies or little practice little pieces and you want to keep it in a book little books are very very handy and it keeps them all together so all your little studies i mean i have numerous little studies in this little board and i always go back to this book and just have a look at it and test you know some of my just to check out how you know how your painting changed over the years i mean this was my first onion painting that i painted so obviously you know 
um, very nice paper you can scrub on it as well and then this is my first choice um, obviously I use this to paint on but this is the Archer's Hot Press Watercolor Paper 300 grams and glued on all four sides so the same as the Hanen Yule you will have to use a palette knife to obviously remove your first layer of watercolor paper so you will just go in there and push in something sharp just lift up that piece there so you will push in something sharp and just move it around all four sides and then lift up your piece of watercolor paper the only problem with this is you if you don't have another block of this you can only paint one painting at a time i normally have two different uh, blocks of watercolor paper or recently i bought a whole roll of watercolor paper and then you just cut them to size um this roll is very convenient however they all turned around a cylinder cardboard cylinder like this so you have to stretch the paper before you can use it uh, so you need either a wooden board where you can stretch it on and you need artist tape so it's quite time consuming but what you can do is just invest in cheaper versions of blocks of watercolor paper so that you can paint just paint you don't have to worry about stretching paper and uh, you know waiting for the paper to dry properly and then you know tracing your whatever you're painting if you use my line drawings um but yes these are some of the papers that i can highly recommend there are quite a few others fabiano i don't have a block of fabiano yet at the moment i finished it all um lovely paper as well i can highly recommend the little blocks as well um so just do your homework test all of them out see which one you prefer you either like cold press hot press i haven't tried the rough watercolor paper because i paint quite a lot of detail on my flowers and on most of my paintings but you should try all the watercolor papers to see which one you prefer i spoke about the watercolor paper yesterday this was the massive box of watercolor paper that i ordered um because it just worked out a lot uh, more reasonable than all the um you know the blocks of watercolor paper that you can get online the reason why i ordered this roll was i sometimes battled to get the um, sheets of watercolor paper in south africa especially with covid we really battled i couldn't find um flat sheets of the Archer's hot press watercolor paper um i think they have in stock now but for about a year and a half i battled to um, get the big flat sheets uh, you can buy the blocks anyway but even now um, i checked over the weekend um because i wanted to order some more of the block of Archer's watercolor paper and it's out of stock 914 centimeters by 113 centimeters and it is a massive roll, so this will last me a lifetime. The only problem in this one again is obviously when I have to cut the paper, I have to ask my whole family to help me. I mean, it is it is a big piece. It is long, and so you have to. I I use the table tennis table, or you can use the carpet. Obviously, make sure your dogs on are not near. Um, and make sure that it's clean before you put the paper on the floor to cut it but I normally use the table dinner table which I use here with all my old stuff physically have everyone on board to help me to cut the paper this is what I explained yesterday it's around um, it's in a big round circle like that absolutely beautiful paper but so difficult to stretch so if you have a wooden board it's fine but you still have to cut it and you can see that she cut it quite skewed just to get it straight because the last time i had to cut it quickly by myself and then i have to measure it and straighten it and it's a mission it's long it's nearly it's nearly nearly <laughs> nearly 
as tall as me not really but nearly so uh, this is the press the wooden press that i said my husband made me for my watercolor paper oops <laughs> oh, everything is falling down here because i have a fan here because it was so hot the other day that i had a fan up yeah it's all falling down now but anyway um this is the press and then i close it like this and i have little clamps to keep it like this so this is how i keep all of my big sheets of paper straight um he put a little um, pressed wood on this side and on this side and obviously i treated it with acid free water uh, with acid free paint and i normally keep it in the plastic anyway that i buy it from and then i have this massive ruler where i don't know where to keep this long thing so i just slide it in here as well i will obviously look for it one day and don't know where i've put it but anyway he made me this nice um sheet and then obviously a little hook so it can hook on here uh, when it falls back so um it doesn't go all the way down and then i just push it down to keep all of the papers down here all of this must still go in there because i just removed it to show the video of all the different papers